But yeah, so starting off, Nash Money Thirty Three tagged us in something on Facebook about when you smack a beer bottle with another beer bottle, shenanigans happen, and he wanted to know the scientific, you know, the reason, the reasoning behind yeah. what's going on, and is the video that he tagged us in legit? Right. So we figured, why not demonstrate it on stream, do it for you guys, and then uh, explain what happened. Yeah. So it's known as beer tapping. It's the beer oldest tapping. dick move in the book. The oldest one. Right? If you're at a party and you want to be a dick, <laughs> yeah. that's how you do it. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know what beer tapping is, let's do a quick demo without doing it. And you can explain to me, what is beer tapping? A quick demo without? Without. Without oh, doing right. it. Like, just explain what tapping all is right. before we go ham. So if I was like a really mean guy, and really was, mean. And I was telling a story to a girl that maybe John was trying to talk mm -hmm. to. This is 10 years ago, by the way. <laughs> We already have girls, but this is theoretical. So I'm, we're saying, I'm chatting up, and he wants to make me look like a fool. Right. I'm going to walk over to Tom at said bar and be like, hey, Tom, how's it going, pal? And you Smash. just tap the beer, and things and then happen. What? Then what happens, Tom? We're gonna. I think we're going to save that for the demo. Okay. So that's basically what, all you do. You walk up to your buddy, you tap his beer, and you cover him. And you watch the madness ensue. And here we go. So... Should we do this? Should we do the live? Should we do it? Yeah, I think we should do it. All right. Do, so, you, do you want to grab the... Uh... This is a fresh beer. Okay. Do and I'm going to grab the bucket. The bucket? The safety bucket? The safety puke bucket. Now, Tom, of course, <laughs> <laughs> of course, this is Science News Over Ruse, where safety is our second oh, priority. Right. Having fun so is second, number one. <laughs> yeah, having fun is number one. Safety is number two. So we're going to put on our safety glasses. I've never chugged a beer with safety glasses on, by the way. <laughs> never. Be a new experience for both of us. So, and so here we go. We've got our safety bucket. Just in case. So now I'm going to smash your beer. Can we see the beer in frame, Kay? Up here we're good? Yeah. Cool. All right. So we pretend I'm telling a story. I just opened a beer. It's it's a freshie. It's a freshie. So Tom, hey, how's it going, pal? Here What's we up, go. What's up, dude? What's up, smash? Oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to drink the whole thing because he's the champion. Because otherwise you make a mess. That's right. That's right. And that's why it's a dick move. Exactly. Yeah. You have to chug it. Oh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> or you get foam on the ground. So the the big question then, Tom, is why? How the heck does that happen? Why is this happening? You could just tap it and it explodes. Yeah. Dude, cheers to you. You're cheers. a champion. Thanks. Man. Yeah. Right on. I, I might look. That's why you have the safety glasses on. Exactly. You don't want to get any beer in your eye, ladies and gentlemen. That's a so bad So now, move. how the hell does that happen? You want, you want to take it? You want to take the lead? <laughs> yeah, I'll start us off. All right. So it starts off with the tap. And once you hit the top, you actually send a shock wave through the beer bottle. The glass. The glass Even itself. It's going to vibrate. So it's actually going to act like a mini spring. You're going to send the shock wave through the glass. And even though the glass looks like a solid, when you smack it, if you can look at it in super, super slow-mo, which maybe we'll do one day, you can actually see the wave travel through the glass and it acts a little bit less like a solid or more like a spring. Mm -hmm. So all that energy moves through it. It's like a so, bell. Yeah, almost, yeah, like a bong, like it yeah. goes through it. So as that energy is passing through your beer, you're actually making little tiny bubbles from that wave that travels through the glass. Mm -hmm. So now we have little tiny bubbles being created and these little bubbles actually begin to pop yeah. And the, as the bubble bursts open, these little tiny bubbles, they burst and they give you a little bit of surface area for your carbon dioxide to evaporate out of your liquid. Right. Because that's what the bubbles are, right? It's just CO2. It's carbon dioxide. This is a carbonated beverage. This, this lovely beer. <laughs> and... Exactly. So, but that doesn't tell the whole story. Right. So we make a few little bubbles and they burst. We get some more surface area. Some CO2 comes out. How do we get this massive foam explosion from a few little bubbles, John? How do we, is it like a positive feedback? What the hell do we got going on? Well, here? that's exactly what it is, Tom. <laughs> yeah, it's a, what we call a positive feedback loop. So now that our surface area has grown a little bit, that's going to make it easier for more and more CO2 to basically evaporate its way into the bubble and grow the bubble into uh, now this rising foaming mess. exactly yeah so once you get the bubbles and they start rising you get less and less pressure as you go up in the beer because there's less 
of the liquid on top of you. So it like almost becomes itself. It wants to keep being coming foam. It's more energy efficient right. to become foam once it's smacked like that than it is to stay your beer. So as nature does, it does what's least energy efficient and it covers you in foam because you got your beer tapped. Exactly. And you look like a fool in front of your friends. Yeah. So no, no don't be tricked. You don't. know what happens. And you got to practice your chugs if you don't want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and don't be that guy. Don't be that don't guy. Don't be that guy. the other guy in the bar. That's not cool. Um, so let's check out the chat real quick. While we're checking the chat, Kyle, I did a little research on this as well. Some research. Yeah. yeah. There is a published paper on uh, this exact science, right? It was led by a gentleman. Let me find his name. Yeah, we have like the actual research paper. Yeah. Somebody did a research paper on the beer. The gentleman's name was Javier Rodriguez Rodriguez. Rodriguez. No joke. Rodriguez. No joke. He's go. got two Rodriguez's in his name. That's pretty sick. You thought you couldn't trust somebody with two first names? Think you can trust somebody with two Rodriguez's in their name? No, I don't nope. think so, ladies and gentlemen. Kyle, <laughs> if we can go ahead and throw on the video from the research uh, of Mr. Rodriguez Rodriguez, that would be fantastic. I don't know if you're going to throw that on the green screen or just on behind this or I don't know how it's going to go. Yeah, it's behind us. But yeah, so basically what you're going to see here is a slow-mo version of, of that explosion of bubbles that we were trying right. to describe. And Starting from mini bubbles to these mushroom cloud of foam bubbles. Tom, you've read my mind. I'm so <laughs> glad you said that because it is a mushroom cloud. That's the most exciting part is that the physics of this actually, it's not exactly the same because there's nothing nuclear or radioactive about our beer but today. the way a but mushroom cloud forms, right? It's exactly the same mechanics of it. Which Mini is mushroom fantastic. cloud in your beer made out of CO2. Yeah. Very cool. And you wanted to mention something a little bit about lakes? Oh, I did. So yeah. But after, I want us to see the uh, the slow mo vid first. Okay. Did we show that? Uh, of yeah. the yeah, of yeah, the, yeah. that vid came up. So there's cool. probably a little delay. So on our stream. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So we just we'll, we'll trust in our. In oh, our boy it's beautiful. I see it. I see it. it's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. So yeah, that amazing effect. It really comes down to the surface area, which is a really counterintuitive, weird thing to think about. That just having a little bit extra area for a reaction to occur on is what makes the magic happen. So, take a few steps back. I was watching a really cool documentary on Discovery Channel and it was called Killer Lakes. I might have been drunk when I saw it, so I was like, <laughs> Killer Lakes, what What the hell, you know? Yeah. So I turned it on and I checked it out. And it's sort of the same thing that's actually going on in the beer. But a rock falls into the water instead of us tapping the beer. Mm -hmm. The increased surface area of the rock itself as well as the bubbles that it makes when it goes in, allows the carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide that was in that lake to come out. Mm. In the same way that these carbon dioxide just bubbled up, like it just wants to get out of the lake. It's like super saturated with these gases. And that extra addition of the rock allowed that gas to come out. So what ended up happening before we knew the science, <clears throat> carbon monoxide is actually more dense than the natural surrounding air. So when this oh. air came out of the lake, it would literally sweep over the hillside, go into villages, and carbon monoxide is a odorless gas, and you don't, you wouldn't even know what it was that killed all these people from an autopsy. Right. So nobody knew what the hell was happening to all these people for a long, long time. Yeah. And villages were getting wiped out for many, many years. Yeah. And they actually fixed it relatively easy, this whole Killer Lakes issue. What did they do? Amazingly enough, they put a massive smokestack in the middle of the lake that lets the extra carbon dioxide and monoxide that would come out of solution go high up into the atmosphere and go nice away and just become part of the air oh, wow. in a more natural process. Huh. So you go from tapping beers to killer lakes, and it all comes down to surface area and gases wanting to do what they do. Pretty wild stuff. Pretty wild stuff. Hey, man. I love it. I love that too. Thank you for sharing that. Of course, Tom. Give me a little. Oh, give me a little tap. A little tap. Not a, not no, no, no. A nice, <laughs> a nice tap. Okay, okay. Yep. Yep. Cheers, man. 